Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as you know and as I had promised, I am back with an interview session. I have taken this interview of a very dear friend, but he is also one person who gives the real picture. He has helped me too much to an extent that I have got to know some legal insights and real insights from him. But he is also a very hardworking person, placed in one of the leading firms here. And this whole journey of him being a foreign trained lawyer, as he was also senior in my law college back home, but I didn't know about it until we met her. And uh, everything that I think he says, it's his own opinion. So people can, you know, think of a different, uh, have, have a different opinion. But that's that's about him. And that's what all the interview is about. Start first, let me introduce you about Saurabh. Saurabh is a person who was working as a law clerk. He's from Delhi. He immigrated in 2018. And uh, he was working in, a, in litigation for seven years. I think with some top-notch lawyers and with uh, High Court, Delhi High Court and uh, Supreme Court practice, he left everything behind and made a decision to come here. So I think a lot of you people can relate with him and can get some real insights. He is also now placed in Atkinson Law as a associate and uh, that is his website and everything about him so let's start the interview without wasting much time and you know what to do you have to like share comment and subscribe hi Saurabh how are you hi Shirin I'm good how are you doing so as you know, I a YouTube channel which is you know all about the real picture that we are going to give and uh, I know you as a person who's grown in front of me and uh, like I've seen your professional growth so I wanted my audience to know that what kind of uh, journey it has been for you, whatever, everything. So I have sorted some questions which I have and I'm going to uh, you know collaborate them and ask you in just about 20-25 minutes and uh, sure. thank you for sparing this time. So let's start. No problem. Thank you. Thank you for having me first. And uh, I'm ready to uh, answer as many questions as you want to. And uh, let's see. Let's I'm see sure what, people what I can answer. I'm with you after uh, my interview. If this video is posted. People will touch me. You know, they'll get, get in with on LinkedIn. Right. So yeah, this is see. the first question that I mm -hmm. want to ask. And I think I know it, but I want everybody else to know it. That how your journey has been till now. From where you started and where you have reached everything. Okay. So as you know that every internationally trained lawyer's journey start with the assessment process, right? We eagerly wait for the assessment to be completed for, uh, by the NCA. Then you get the result and they assign you the subjects. Unfortunately, I was assigned eight subjects, whereas I know that most of the people, like 90% of the people uh, are assigned only five subjects to, uh, to, go, to complete their NCA process. And uh, I landed in Canada in January 2018. I remember last week of January 2018. And in April 2018, I took my first constitutional exam because I have no clue at that time like what this uh, lawyer thing is about. And I just, I, I was just going with the flow, I will say. So it was a bit difficult for me because uh, there was no, uh, no one to guide me. And there was no, I was, I was like a, a kind of an introvert person. So I had no access to any of the, uh, Facebook groups or the WhatsApp groups or the NCA. I, I, I didn't have access to your, your informatory uh, vlogs also. So I, I thought that I'll take one step at a time and then, then I uh, started writing uh, my constitution exam. Then I wrote my other, other remaining eight exams. Uh, uh, means Long story short, by the April 2019, I was uh, able to clear all my eight NCA exams. Now, the only thing that bothered me at that time was finding a job in the legal market. As you know, I, I was a litigation lawyer back home in Delhi. And especially when you practice in Delhi, it has its own charm. So it is very difficult. It was very difficult to come out of that uh, uh, charm, charm of being a lawyer there. So I, I, I started applying everywhere for, uh, for legal assistant position, for law clerk's position for paralegal or for anything, anything that, that was related to, uh, uh, to, the legal, uh, to legal or law field. I remember I wrote to one of the law firms that I'm ready to work in a law firm even as a typist if you want me to. So, but I was not receiving any response from anywhere. There was no hope. There was always rejection. And what I thought is, like what I observed at that time is that people or the law firms are only considering people who have either Canadian education or the Canadian experience. So that is the most valuable thing uh, that they are looking for. And no one is letting in the, 
uh, internationally trained lawyers or I'll say foreign trained lawyers because and and they are right. I I will not blame them because it is their system, you know, uh, that they want they want to keep it running rather than spending time on training a lawyer from another jurisdiction. They want someone ready to uh, keep the uh, keep the machine moving, right? Mm. So I was fortunate enough to get a chance to uh, to be interviewed with a, a law firm called Cunningham Law Firm, and the lady uh, Miss Karen Cunningham. She interviewed me. She took my transcript. She she asked me to write a sample uh, writing piece. She she means my means what not you can't imagine, Sharon. I was be, I was applying for a lawless position, and I was thinking that that uh, she is going to bill me or as if I'm applying for any senior associate position. <laughs> and um, fortunately, she liked me and she hired me. So the moment she hired me, I was very happy about that. Okay, my law I got a job in a law firm, and oh, I have an experience of seven years back home and. I think this law clerk job will be easy for me, but no, the real real truth is going to be uncovered now. So the moment I saw their filing system, the moment I got um, uh, accustomed to their uh, uh, law firm practice, I observed that it is totally different. It is totally, totally different of what we uh, used to do back home. I, I had an experience of filing from the MM court to the Supreme Court of India. Hmm. The procedure, the Canadian procedure, the Canadian the uh, way of filing, the way of maintaining files is totally different, which which is like, I, I, I would say it is totally different. It was procedurally challenging and uh, any lawyer will get a shock. Any lawyer will be in a shock to see the system. Oh my, where is my 10 years? I saw my seven years uh, practice going down in the drain. Yeah. So that was uh, that was more challenging for me and it, it, it hits your confidence as well. Exactly. So I would say the journey is not easy, even if you clear the NCA exam, which I don't think so that they are but they are they are not difficult at all, right? They are yeah. giving you the opportunity to opportunity to write exams with an open book. Whereas we are we back home, um, we are used to write uh, exams, which you know uh, we, we used to remember the sections and we used to put yeah. them in, in the paper. But here everything is open book. They have more. Their approach is more on a factual base. Like they they want you to understand things rather than mugging up things and uh, vomiting out in the writing in in the paper. Mm -hmm. So. So the journey uh, journey was difficult. Plus, I had my wife, I had my child. Your lifestyle drops, and two kids, and uh, and you feel ashamed to tell your friends back home that you're working as a law clerk because they won't understand what a law clerk position here means. They will think, oh, he's like our Munshi in the law firm. Okay, so yeah. so here 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 of uh, legal assistant and law clerks who are actually doing, running the law offices here. Right, they they have they they are they are more responsible. They are more professionals, and they assist lawyers in what not manner. I will say. Right. So I gained I gained immensely with that law firm. I will say that I was there for almost two years, mm -hmm. and uh, mm, the kind of learning I gained there in two years as a law clerk, I'm telling you, I thought that I have wasted my seven years in practice. Mm -hmm. This is this is I'm in, in Canadian perspective. Hmm. I have not learned in my seven years of practice back home what I've learned here as a law clerk in two years. I don't know what what is what is inside me that that is uh, you know uh, pushing me to say this sentence, but this is true. So yeah. so you can analyze the complexity, or I will say the simplicity that this uh, 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 that lies between Indian Indian prospect and the Canadian prospect. I'm not saying that any country has its uh, Indian law is bad and they are not procedurally correct. I'm saying that it is totally different. So, so called we, we call ourselves so called internationally trained lawyers, uh, but that internationally trained experience, you know, is, is sometimes you will see that it is of no use here in Canada. Hmm. Thereafter, you know, I wrote my, in April 2019, I wrote my, I got my certificate of qualification. And uh, by that time, I was registered in the lawyer licensing process. So I appeared for my barrister and solicitor exam, which was scheduled in June 2019. And I'm telling you, I took both of the exams in one go. And I was fortunate enough. Yeah, and I was fortunate enough to do that in one go, just because I had an experience working as a law clerk. I know how this law, uh, law firms function here, the law society, what the law society's role is, how we should maintain our files, and these exams are all about them only. They are all about procedures. Yeah. They are not asking you to apply or something like this. They are not asking you to show your drafting skills. They are not asking you to show your uh, 
oratory skills in the exam they are just asking you to be procedural and uh, to show your procedural knowledge and how and your professional responsibility and liability mm -hmm. so yeah it is it is difficult it is it the transition phase is always difficult so but 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 everyone gets through whosoever is hard working and is sincerely pursuing it everyone gets through yeah. it that's right having said that i would like to know that right now you are an associate with a firm which is a downtown core firm and they i think they are the they have hired you as the first indian lawyer so how does that make you feel and the whole journey about it now that we know your journey but how does that position and that kind of effort and hard work that you put in makes you feel okay so i will tell you that that is also not an easy position to get even if you google like any I, while i was working as a law clerk i was i was in touch with many other law firms right because um, so so out of curiosity i will tell you it's funny out, out of curiosity whenever i used to receive a, a letter or any correspondence from any other firm i used to google them and uh, see who who lawyers who what kind of lawyers work there trust me with all the big firms that so called downtown firms i never came across a person who is an nca candidate and who is working there without having any canadian education like some people have done either llm from osgood or university of toronto or some people are born in water here or some people of indian origin i'm not saying i'm the only one of the indian origin but there are very very few people in top firms if you will google today also you will not find any internationally trained lawyer directly going into the big big top law firm without even i'm in the experience yeah yeah mm -hmm. even if you have an experience or not so so it is it is it was a difficult uh, uh, journey so my my mission was like my i was always dreaming whether i will get into that kind of firm culture or i will learn that wherever you apply you, they have a requirement that uh, downtown experience is a must and it will be considered as an asset Uh, i'm telling you when they said that when they say that uh, in the requirement that it is considered an asset that means they are looking for the asset they are not just suggesting you they are just they, they are they are not just telling you you that they are just they just want that they just want that and uh, even when i applied in this law firm uh, at kinston yeah. so uh, they didn't ask much about my back home experience they were impressed with my back home experience of course but uh, what uh, the thing that uh, click them is that i have a work i have worked uh, as a law clerk in in a canadian law firm that matters most so i'm telling you the uh, it is always difficult to find first job once you have the first job you have your foot into the door and then you can then it all depends upon your hard work and your dedication then your so, graph goes up only some way or the other but yeah. i have also seen that and i always say that that your graph goes up only right as there is no you want there, to make it up yeah of course right yeah there is no look back see see this is a beautiful country and uh, uh, things are things are uh, much uh, much more settled here In, we came we come from the system where we have a complex system of uh, complex uh, system of practice right yeah. right lawyers judges don't give a damn what you do if they throw the files on face of the lawyers lawyers are being degraded here it is totally professional decorum even you have to match that uh, decorum in the office also you will see seniors are not hanging out with juniors or means it is a complete professionalism and that is what we call a cult we call i think cultural shock that all lawyers or anyone you see you will feel that oh, i'm a, I, i have cleared my exams here i have done this i have done but no one is giving a damn about it right a person next to me next to me is a, is a, is a is 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 a is a lock luck i will say and still he is being respected more than i am so here this in this country if you are coming with the charm that you you are loyal loyal kind of thing then then i'm i'm sorry then then yeah you you have it you will gain it eventually but you will have to work hard for that yeah say. and that's the real picture that i was talking about thanks for yeah, that that is that is the real picture and money money doesn't come your fortunes are not going to burst and you are not getting money like the moment you are called to the bar the real struggle starts after that i always tell that in india also i i told everyone that law is the most easiest degree of, to uh, to procure and the most difficult profession to practice and this stands all means my ex, as far as my experience is yes this this was valid in india also and this is valid in canada also. yeah there's so many challenges while practicing you will see there 
Uh, the system, everything is software based. You have to bill for your time. You have to be reasonable to your clients. You have to uh, explain the code. How, sometimes there is a situation that you have to explain the codes about the hours, and uh, your clients, your clients can uh, claim, file claims against you. You have to take those precautions as well. So there is lot of lot of procedures and procedures and uh, requirements that a lawyer should do should should follow here. Okay. Okay, one of the things that we've discussed in the past, and uh, let's do that again today, is that we see, you know, I know we all know so many people who get out of law school and open up their own real estate practice, their own immigration offices. So, what are your thoughts on this? That private practice, with a with a corporate office job or a law firm job in litigation anywhere, but what are your you know uh, thoughts on this? My experience says that I have a lot of friends who have opened their private practice. You know? mm-hmm. Uh, it is uh, the practice here is not charm at all. You know, it is very taxing and especially if you're alone and if you don't have any experience, my advice, this is my personal advice. Uh, this is not to offend anyone, but I think that unless and until you have three or four years of experience working with any other firm, any firm in, in Canada, maybe uh, it may be any in any field you want to do, uh, go. Uh, I, I would advise that don't go for your private practice. Don't rush yourself. Because uh, sometimes what happens, I know that uh, I, I know some people open. I, I salute to their uh, to their uh, courage. I will say, but it is very taxing. I will say, yeah. and until unless you know the procedures and intricacies of uh, the Canadian uh, Canadian law, I don't know. It means I don't have that confidence to run my own practice in Canada, even after having the experience of almost three years now. So uh, because there is lot to learn, and once you learn all the intricacies and all the requirements uh, uh, that that you need to fulfill to run your practice then you can you, you can open your practice and you can flourish plus it is also difficult to retain the clients sometimes the clients are you know so here here being a lawyer is also a responsibility if you send a letter to a ministry i'm telling you you have that authority with you and if you tell something in the court the courts will Consider will have weight in your whatever in will consider that your uh, letter or your if you're saying something it should have some weight in it. So yeah. that weight should come only when you have the experience and knowledge that okay client is not fooling around. Sometimes clients may say okay sort of uh, I I had an experience where client said okay uh, uh, X person has uh, you know uh, hit me please file the complaint against him. Or, or mention this in the affidavit that he has hit me. So I asked her, ma'am, can you show me your police report? Have you taken any action? Yeah, yeah, I've taken action against them. There is a police report, this and that. So I asked for the police report and there was no none, trust me. And that incident never happened. But even if, I'm not saying that uh, you, you act as a investigator, but you have to verify because tomorrow what will happen, these clients will turn up against you and they will say, Hey, I never told my lawyer to do that. That, and he's the one who mentioned uh, even when I was suggesting that not to do so. So, law society may ask you for the uh, conferring documents for those things. So that is that is how you know we as a uh, new lawyers can be in trouble. Uh, some some clients can make us like we are vulnerable to some of the clients who are who don't have good intentions. Mm-hmm. So those are the precautions that needs to be taken, but. Again, again, I will say that uh, you will uh, learn this only if you will have the experience. Otherwise, if you are new, some people are doing great job being new and uh, means. I personally feel that you should have an experience. I will, I will say that that's you should work in experience is the mother of knowledge. I will say right. Hundred percent, especially in our profession, and especially with the law society having such strict rules. Right. You, <laughs> you know what I'm talking Law about. society is not, you know, even when you see when you see the training, or you will go to BCPO, you will attend the CPD hours. They will say that they are with us. They are with us, but they are there to protect people also. Yes. So even if any anyone, fi- no matter how hard you work after a client, even if a client files a complaint against you, they they will ask for so many documents from you that you will, and if you're not maintaining your files properly, then you will be in trouble. Right. So that is why I believe that one should always strive for uh, having a work experience before launching their own practice. 
completely agree with this that hands on experience is such a sign of go non if you say in the your language it is so important and especially with the law society having such stringent rules for lawyers and the way they regulate lawyers because in the end they are for public interest right which is good which is not bad but ethically we have to be so careful with so such small small things that there can be auditing and everything on you as a lawyer so you have to be so careful okay so also my next question is that you know you immigrated with your whole family like i came here alone i got married later and वैसे भी लड़कियों पे कम रिस्पांसिबिलिटी होती है घर रन करने की बट फॉर यू आई एम श्योर इट मस्ट हैव बीन अ वेरी टैक्सिंग थिंग द होल चैलेंज ऑफ कमिंग फ्रॉम देयर एंड कमिंग हियर फाइनेंशियली इमोशनली मेंटली लीविंग योर फैमिली बैक होम एंड गेटिंग योर ऑब्वियसली इमीडिएट फैमिली बट लीविंग योर पेरेंट्स बैक होम सो हाउ डिड यू ओवरकम ऑल ऑफ दैट see when you have to do something you know you, you you my wife my wife was always interested i'm telling you honestly that my wife was always interested to move to canada there we were having a beautiful life and everything was going smooth but uh, for the sake of you uh, of our daughter's future or means it was a decision like it's a decision no one can compel you you take on your own right and yeah. there's something in you that uh, that provokes you to take the decision so my wife was the reason for this and um, uh, the moment we came here even she realized that uh, there are expenses that uh, uh, that are lined up here and uh, you know you cannot run your house it's not a joke you cannot run out run your house on minimum wages you have to think twice before buying everything so it is it is quite challenging and frustrating as well especially when you establish yourself i'm saying in this uh, you were in this stage of establishing yourself and your your graph was going good in back home so uh you you i just work hard i never took an off in two years also while i was writing my nc exams i will tell you sherin that i didn't i, I didn't took any off i'm this interview is not about boasting myself like what i did or course, you know why i did it is it is about telling that how how we meet those challenges how you should be prepared to do anything when you land in canada uh, you should be prepared to work in factories if even if you drive uber if you drive People do that. Work in restaurants so, and yeah, all the time. Certain there is nothing wrong in that, Absolutely. right? But you, every I think everyone, every other person you will talk and who is into the process of this NCA or lawyer licensing, I see a lot of posts on LinkedIn as well that they are not getting their legal job. I will say that I was fortunate enough that I'm Miss Karen Cunningham. She was, uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, obliged to her. that you know she gave me the opportunity to interview but the interview also for one job you will see there are 400 applications after one job and you are con- you are competing with the people who are who in your mind are more talented than you who have this canadian um, education they have canadian accent you they are born in water pair so your competition is with them plus your own peers from back home so the competition is cut throat here i am telling you but you you need to manage and you need to uh, you need to plan well you need to have the finances to take care of at least one year i will say that you should have money in your hand that even if for one year i will not work in canada i will i'm going to survive and in one year you should work so hard that uh, you it should change your it should change your time by you know practicing or or by or by get, landing in a good job so hmm. it was challenging especially with daughters but thank god to the indian government who gives all kinds of benefits to people who can who are not earning well and uh, who's who 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 are really low who really belong to low income group but yeah there are challenges and we all face them yeah. and you will feel you will feel the you will have the same kind of feeling you had when you uh, graduated from your law school no, like you you were struggling you were looking for a job and no one you were getting rejections from everywhere we you know uh, time heals everything so we forget but as we move on we forget like i i forgot after 5 6 years i forgot that i have ever applied for an interview to a certain place because you know i was i was picking up and you know people tend to forget everything so it's but like- but but yeah this the, these two years these two years make me realize that yes we are fresh graduates forget what i have done back home forget whatever uh, things were in our favor but let's start from fresh only that if you have that zeal that will keep you going keep you going absolutely that's right so and ab mera ek question hai so according to you 
same circumstances if somebody has similar kind of circumstances or somebody may you know everybody is unique everybody has different circumstances to immigrate or not but according to in general who you think should immigrate and who you think should not immigrate so any if you have any kind of opinion and you can throw some light on that so we, we are talking in the lawyer's perspective right that right. which right. lawyer what what kind of lawyers should immigrate or what kind of lawyer should not immigrate so i have done all the calculations and you know um, i know that's well. right <laughs> me and my wife keep discussing this that you know whether we have made the right decision or it was wrong or yeah. this and that trust me we are we are here from last two and a half years now uh, god has been kind to us but today also we discuss that whether our decision was right or not i think every immigrant has that question you know because we we forget our human memory is very short we forget our old problems that you know pushed us to shift to canada so my simple my simple uh, calculation is that people who have their own house in delhi or wherever and who are earning 10 to 12 lakhs a year should never think of migrating to canada and if you're thinking about you know that uh, uh that i want to make more money and uh, uh i will i will live a lavish life you will have that but the kind of struggle you should be ready for putting in that kind of uh, efforts in that right if uh, you should calculate yourself that whether you are ready to give another 6 to 7 years to your life and then make it big or you you stay wherever you are and you earn enough money and come here as a tourist enjoy the world you know visit places and uh, you know just enjoy your life and grow yourself uh, in india because india itself has a lot of potential i truly believe that you can flourish in india as a lawyer if you're a good lawyer there is no dearth of clients mm-hmm. but here it is very difficult the, uh, the competition is cutthroat and people will not let you in easily uh, the big firms are you know they have their own criteria until unless you have an experience of 2 3 years 4 years 5 years uh, they are not uh, going to take you or and the packages are not too much attractive plus the tax rate in canada you end up paying the more you earn the more you end up paying uh, if you earn like if you will if you will earn like 100000 dollars a year you will end up paying 45 40 to 45% in taxes so if you are if you are thinking money wise then this i what my my perspective is and that this is not the country to make money immediate money at least immediate money Yeah. i will say yeah lawyers do make money lawyers have much more respect but you should be prepared to uh uh to you know put th- those kind of years that it demands to reach there but again i will repeat that if you have a good package if you are in a good law firm i see people migrating from good law firm and you know working and struggling here as a legal assistant to law clerks but this sometimes these things can you know kill your i'm not degrading those jobs but sometimes these positions can really kill your confidence and bring uh, bring anxiety and stress in your life which is not required once you are back, back home we have our own problems but no country is perfect my friend no country is perfect here also we have weather we have seen snow storms only i will say two or three months uh, of the year are good that we are happy and jolly otherwise everyone is stick to their houses and uh, yeah means it is it is it is their choice but again i will say that you know the people who have good law firm jobs and uh, uh, ex- uh, people who have more than 5 to 6 years of experience should not think of migrating and people who are unfortunately not doing good or they, they are not getting ahead or they are not uh, moving forward in their career i know i know i know lawyers there who are despite having you know despite being talented and you know being being much more talented than you and me are i are or some other any other lawyer from the supreme court or high courts are but still they are struggling to meet their daily needs because there is there is uh, less opportunity available to them but if you you those people should immediately think of migrating because this country is full of opportunity and even if you don't if you do, if, even if you don't excel as a lawyer you can make yourself life better in sir in doing by doing anything and ultimately you can work towards your goal and become a good lawyer yeah. you're not right so let's conclude by the last question in the end i just want to ask you what is your recommendation to the npa candidates to all the lawyers jo aa gaye hain jo nahi aaye hain matlab to everybody in the profession my recommendation to the profession is that uh, uh, it is it is 
it is difficult or it is it is not what in our mind is like in my mind trust me in my mind too when i uh, when my wife used to tell anyone that okay my husband was a lawyer bad for many years because oh lawyers make money here lawyers make money here lawyers make money here there is no minting of money then the competition is so tough you don't get jobs easily uh, but there is always a hope we all live in hope and uh, and i will not say that give up but keep trying keep pushing i know that whosoever is in the process i am a person of average intelligence i will not say that i was a super intelligent or 99% kind of guy i am a person of an average intelligence whosoever is in the process can make it through right but you need to have patience and perseverance and you should you should be prepared to uh, to face the worst some people uh, some people you know don't get job and they launch their own practice on their own and they they get successful people like me keep saying on the website but they are launching the practice and they are they are they are doing wonderful so so it is if it if you if you have it in you the canada it's have it for them yeah yeah if you have it in you i will say uh, canada have it for you so and that is simple so everyone everyone will will get through the process process is not that difficult at all it is it is just matter of time it is giving you an opportunity to you know in 7 8000 you spend and you become a lawyer in canada whereas mm-hmm. the, look at the canadian uh, uh, canadian kids or canadian uh, people who are striving to become lawyer they spend 70 80000 you know they take loans and uh, yeah right to pay them back and we are fortunate you know that i know back home we don't spend much in the law schools but here fees are like runs in 100000 of dollars i had an incident where one of my friend told me Oh, you guys are lucky. You don't have to do the article shape. Your articles get exempted easily. You don't have to pay hundred thousand dollars towards law. Only uh, you, you just pay this. And I thought that what was the reason she was telling? I then I analyzed that she was right and she was frustrated. So people have some people will have uh, that kind of mindset for you also mm-hmm. that you know these people come from uh, from abroad and they they do it easily yeah. because everyone uh, everyone's journey to everyone looks so easy. Yeah. But nothing is easy. Nothing is easy. Okay, so Arav, thank you so much for the wonderful insight. I think uh, you, we conclude this interview now. And and I I want to say that this is all my personal experience and personal. Oh, uh, a disclaimer personal. on my blog that personal because I'm maybe asking a lot of things. Which is right. personal and which is out of. I don't want to discourage anyone, but uh, this is the this is the reality that I. Yeah, have exactly. And this is all the channel is about. So right. you are good. Thank you. Bye. I wish you all the best. Thank you. So guys, I hope this whole thing was useful for you guys. I hope you got some real insights from Saurabh. He is the one person who's worked really hard, and I wanted ki aap logon tak uski real picture zaroor aaye. Now you have to evaluate and make your own decision. But uh, everybody is entitled to their own opinion, as you know. But you should evaluate for yourself. And I'm I'm going to you know put more interviews, more such interviews which give you a real picture about the Canadian legal market. I hope you like it. And if you like, then hit the like button because the much you like, I think the much recommendation it uh, gets me into, which is helpful again for us to spread some awareness. And uh, thank you. Stay home. If you have any other questions, put in the comment section. And I'm sure that I can you know take them up in the next uh, legal interview series. So bye.